For a lot of us, making a persona is as simple as making a character and picking our favorite one and saying, that's it. That's my persona. For many, that works fine, but some of us may want to put more thought into what our persona is like. So first, what is a persona? A persona is the main thing that makes furries stand out. Tons of fandoms have fan characters, their own original characters, or cosplay as their favorite character. But the furry fandom is the only fandom I can think of that not only encourages us to make a fursona, but almost makes it seem mandatory at this point. I once came up with a concept for my own My Hero Academia character that I never got around to making art of, but I don't think I'd ever dress up as them if I went to a convention. This is where the fursona is different from your standard original character. A fursona is an alternate version of yourself, a stand-in for who you are and represents you within the fandom. For most of us, it's also our username and our online identity. For some, they roleplay as their characters. A fursona is our tool for interacting with and participating in the fandom. Many people will pick their favorite animal and start there. But there isn't really a wrong way to make a fursona, as long as you like it in the end. A fursona can be a one-for-one -one version of you as a cat, or it can be an ideal for what you want to be, or who you want to be. It can be an ideal version of yourself. This is in part why this community speaks to trans people too. It lets us play around with the idea of what we consider our ideal selves long before we even realize we're trans. You have no idea how long I used a female fursona before realizing that I was trans, and using my persona to play around with the idea of being another gender before making the plunge. So, my favorite animal is a sheep, but for a while, I was changing species almost yearly. I went through being a fox, cheetah, sheep, a different sheep, lion, panda, chimera, manticore, bat, different bat, and sheep again. Turns out, I was more interested in character design than picking a specific persona to stick with, and you can do that too, although I'd be lying if I said it wasn't expensive to do that. My first proper fursona was just a boring old regular sheep. I never even got art of them. He was a feminine male character who wore glasses and, and they later became this character, Eli. Once I found out I was trans, I made him into Noel. I like aspects of body horror like extra appendages or organs like mouths and eyes. So I worked that into a lot of my previous fursonas. That preference played its role in the design of Eli with the tummy mouth and I kept that when I changed her to Noel as well. Noelle's design also has elements of games I like, like her halo is designed based on the statue of Sparta from Devil May Cry 4. I kept the colors simple for these two, black and red for the demon sheep, and gold and white for the angel sheep. For a lot of people, these two were the peak of my character design, and I have so much fan art of them. It's actually all on my other computer, I've yet to transfer it all over, but it's, it's a pretty sizable file. I never focused much on their personality. Eli was a sort of succubus character, so... He was the lewd and flirtatious type, while Noel was more of my vain and conceited attributes. I took my vanity and I dialed it up to 11 for her. A lot of people are anxious or have problems with confidence, so I think they both came across as very confident, and that allowed me to essentially fake confidence until I developed my own. For a while, I experimented with different OCs, and I'd call them my fursona, but looking back, none of them really were. My next actual fursona wouldn't be until Sarah Chimera, which was a couple years later. I designed Sarah because I liked Greek mythology. She is absolutely my favorite fursona, as well as the manticore version of her. But I dropped her due to the difficulties of trying to figure out how to VTube with multiple heads or designing a fursuit with multiple heads. I ended up realizing that the only way I'd be able to really make it work is having to spend a lot of money trying to get all three heads animated to talk when I talk. The other alternative was getting a 3D model, which is also just as expensive. So it wasn't doable at the time, at least not with my current art skill. Chimera surprisingly don't have that much lore, so she allowed for me to make up a lot of lore for her too, like naming conventions. But each syllable in the name is actually a name for each head and her body. Say is her body's name, Sarah is the lion, Sefi is the goat, and Sena is the snake. And Serafina is the name they use as a whole. I created lore and cultural reasons for this naming convention, but design-wise, I think her color choices are just okay. I'm actually colorblind, so I have a hard time designing characters, but I picked her because I liked Chimeras in Dragon's Dogma. The one on screen now is the one I designed to VTube with. 
Yep, another sheep. The bat model I used for this channel before was actually part of an experiment and was never a fursona. I made this channel originally to see if I could grow a new channel from the beginning faster than my first channel. So I used a new model so no one would recognize me. And it worked. In three months I've grown this channel more than the one that I had been active with for a year. But I switched to the model I used for the first channel because I bought this model and I plan to use it. I bought this model before I made the, this channel even. For Sarah Proto's design I started with a concept. A lot of YouTubers have a concept and theme they go around and build from there. Proto was sheeps and space themed. Two of my favorite things, and then I started designing. I like dark colors, but all black would be too hard to see. So I used purples for the fur, neon speckles to bring focus to things I wanted seen easier, like the eyes. Then I realized I was in over my head and commissioned the person who made Sarah Chimera to redesign Proto. I shared my original art of her and said, this general idea, but more space. I also wanted stars and stardust in her hair. I also added the elbow length and thigh length fluff because it looks like thigh highs and long gloves, and I thought it would be super cute to make her wool in that shape. So how to design a fursona. If we're going by what I did, pick an animal. I chose a long tail sheep. Pick a theme. I chose space. Choose your base color, purple for me. Choose a second and third color. I chose different shades of purple. Make patterns. Maybe add things you like, like how I did with stars or video game themes. Hair color. I chose white with pink highlights because I like white hair, probably because of Devil May Cry. Then choose a name. I just used one from a previous persona. The name Proto comes from my first channel, in which I used a 3D protogen model to V2 for a while and just kept the name because I was tired of changing my username. For the personality, you can make your own, but but I like to use aspects of my personality and dial them up. Like, I'll make Proto seem more of a doofus than I actually am, because it's funny. When it comes to design though, consider the personality of the character and try to make that come through in their design. I don't think I did that super well with any of my personas besides Sarah Chimera. You can see each head's personality in their appearance, but that's more because of Peropal's art than my personal design. She made the art for her. So really, Come up with a general design and hire someone else to fix it. That's the Sarah Proto way. But if you plan on making a fursuit of your fursona, things get a little bit harder. You have to consider how doable a lot of these aspects are, because I didn't factor fursuit design in making Proto. My first fursuit will look pretty different from my model. I can't do hair like this on a fursuit. Some of these markings are too small to stitch and might be too hard to paint onto the fur. The thigh high and sleeve wool are probably going to be just patterns, but things like the star collar I had really cool ideas for. My star collar is actually made of hollowed out upholstery foam, and the two halves are fused together like with glue, and on the inside is bells. And then I'm going to cover it in yellow UV fur so it glows, so when it's dark, you know, it'll glow, and then when it I walk around and stuff, it'll shake and the bells will jingle. I thought that would be super cute. Things like gradients or small markings might have to be airbrushed. Airbrushed parts aren't machine washable. Too much bright colors means grime shows easier, so you'll need to wash a bright colored suit more often to keep those colors bright. Or avoid anything that might stain like it's the plague. Patterns mean buying lots of different colors of fur. Lots of short fur means having to shave all of that fur. I might have to completely redesign Proto in a way that works for fur suits that won't make the cost so high. Like, I'm already considering not doing the wool pattern on the arms and legs just because I'm concerned about stains. Like, what if I decide to eat barbecue in, in my fursuit? That would suck. I'd have to roll up my sleeves and... No, it's just not happening. I'm not... I, I wouldn't be able to eat barbecue. What if I want to eat spaghetti? Huh? I'm, I'm gonna have to worry about so many spaghetti stains on my fursuit. Alright, well, that's pretty much everything I can think of. This accidentally turned into mostly talking about my personas and their designs, but it's probably useful in a sense because I'm someone who's made so many, you can just get some ideas by looking at my stuff and probably dissect it and figure out how to go about making your own. But I hope you were able to get something useful from this. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you all later. Bye! Bye!